You too. What's good? Living in fear. Man, I tell you, man, I'm not going to sit here and lie. It's like a lot of the days when I'm trying to just live my life normally. I just get so caught in this anxiety and this, this life of fear that I've gotten to this place where I don't feel like I can go anywhere and do anything anymore. I sit back and I look on uh, some of my old videos. I sit back and look on some old pictures of myself. I look back at even videos of other people and all the time that they have fun. Look, I don't know what anybody else is going through. Like, trust me, I don't. I don't know who else is living like I am, living every day afraid to even, you know, get outside and go do things and live life. I get scared to sit in my house. I get scared to go outside. It is not the normal me, you know, it's just the, the part of me that's come off the drugs and realize my own mortality. And I'm starting to realize that, you know, you can't do this forever. And I, I find myself trying to always find this place of what's my purpose. And because I'm not living my purpose, which I feel like I am when I get on here and I talk to you guys and I get on here and tell you all about uh, the things I go through and I try to, you know, also teach a lesson within those things. I do feel like I'm living out my purpose. And even when I'm at work and I'm working with, uh, kids and teaching them math and that kind of stuff and helping them get along i feel like i'm doing what i'm supposed to do but it's hard not to get caught in the monotony it's hard not to get caught in the mundane things of life and uh, be so confused and i i just find myself so scared to go explore it's, i'm so scared to go out and see things in life i'm so afraid to take a chance on anything i'm afraid to go all in so i always find myself back in this rut i find myself living in a rut like I'm just right there getting ready to hop out and really go do something like really go all in on something like really go all in on whatever it is go all in and work it out go all in on uh um talking here on stream go all in and uh, smiling having fun laughing I have a hard time even just smiling I have a hard time just laughing and, and getting into things because I find myself just so scared that if I start to get happy for any reason I'm going to start feeling the anxiety or I'm going to die or I'm going to have a panic attack or something like that. And that's where my mind likes to go. It just gets into this place where it's like, man, can you not be happy? I start getting into this rut that I've heard. I've heard people talk like this and I never understood it, but I start to understand it more now. The pessimism. I get into that place where it's like, well, what's the point? I'm going to die anyway. Why? Why? Why smile? Why? Why even laugh? I'd rather just cry in my pain and just wait for the darkness to come. And I think that's where a lot of us have gotten because we see the news. We see everything on social media. We see people who are possibly truly happy. And we see people who are possibly unhappy, right? We see people that when we look at their lives, they're like, man, they're so happy. Look at them. They're going to the beach. They're smiling with their husband. They're smiling with their friends. Look at them. Look how happy they are with their kids. Why the heck am I sitting here um, sad as heck? I might as well just get ready to die. Like I've even got to the point where I'm just being honest. I sometimes feel like, even though I know this isn't true, like it gets in my head and I know, I know this is coming from another place, a place, I'm, a place that's not love, but there's a part of me that's always like, man, God just wants to off me. And not even, I don't think God, I don't even think like God wants to kill me. It's like, there's a part of me that thinks in my head, like the second I finally get content with life and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to live all, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to live fully. I'm going to live all for God. I'm going to live. I'm going to be the, the best person I can be to people. I'm going to uh, be as healthy as I can. I'm going to be the best I can. Even though I know some days I'm going to fall short, I'm still going to give it my all. I feel like the second I do that, God's going to be like, nope, anxiety, depression, panic attack, death. It's just going to be like a boom, 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 boom. I'm just going to die in depression, you know? And that's why I find it so hard for me to give it my all because it feels like it, because what happened last time when I started to finally come back together and I understand this is coming from my drug use. It's because I, I, I've used so much. I've used drugs for so long and I, I lived in a fantasy for so long, especially with uh, porn in my life. I lived in such a fantasy for so long that my brain has a hard time bringing up happiness. I had a hard time coping with reality. And I even find sometimes myself going through derealization, which you might hear some people talk about derealization or depersonalization where you feel like you're in a dream world nothing feels real and stuff like that and my life doesn't feel real sometimes i do the only time i feel real honestly guys is when sometimes i may overeat <laughs> sometimes even though i don't I, I'm, I'm vegan so I, I don't eat the same food i used to but if i if i taste something that even tastes like the food i used to eat and i used to eat so terrible i'm talking about i used to eat a whole block of Velveeta cheese um I used to eat grilled cheese sandwiches. 
um, Taco Bell, McDonald's, any bad food you can think about, I ate it. And uh, so if I even taste any, if I eat something that tastes anything like that, I start to feel normal again. Like it's like my, I start coming back to myself and it's, it's that, it's that instant thing that my brain is like, Oh, there you are. There's the tray. I remember. Or if I look at something like this, like say I'm watching YouTube or something, right. Or I'm just going through Twitter and you see a sexy photo pop up or something that then it, then I start feeling normal again. It's like, there he is. There is the old tray. Or when I start imagining I'm smoking weed again, or I start looking at a liquor store too long. There's the old tray. There he is. I get that little bit of glimpse that makes me want to go all in. You know, there's some part of me that always wants to stop by a dispensary and be like, I ah, forget it. Let me go back to the old me. Let me go ahead and smoke it up. Let me go back to the old me. Let me just get a quick drink of that. Let me get a quick Hennessy. You know what? Hey, let me go through all these evil porn sites. Let me, let me just forget it. And maybe it's not that evil. You guys, I, I go through it. You know, as much as I talk about trying to get out of this life and get out of these addictions and get out of all these things i, I still go through it I, I haven't been clean for 30 years you know what i mean i've been clean for nine months now and it's hard this is the worst i've ever felt the first time i ever got clean i was clean for four years but i was still addicted to you know sexual things and i was still stuck this is the first time i'm clean from everything every day i have to go to sleep without you know doing things you know obviously i'm only intimate with my wife so it's harder to only imagine one woman it's harder to not go out and uh, look at all these other women it's hard not to you know do things to myself and all these kind of things i have to really get all my intimacy and all my things from somebody else and it's something i really can't control you know when you're living in a fantasy of drugs and you're living in the fantasy of porn you you feel like you have all the control because i choose when i want to feel this way i choose when i get the climax i choose when i i, I get high i choose when i get to come down from that high I choose when I'm drunk and I choose all these other things. And it really just leads you to this place of being in control. And it's a fantasy. And so now when I don't, I don't have any of these things, I don't have anything to grab. You know, when I'm not live streaming or anything, I don't have anything to be control of. If anything happens to me, I'm, it just happens to me. And it's hard because even now when I try to work out and stuff like this and I get my anxiety gets up because my heart rate starts going and I get scared. It sucks, man. And it, I, I, I get scared. I get scared, you know, I don't, and I understand the jokes and I get it cause I'm fat and, uh, and I get it that people, you know, they make fun of me, you know, even, you know, even if I've lost a hundred pounds, but I understand people making fun of me be like, you're fat, you're this, you're that you need to work out. And it's like, I agree with you. I know I'm still fat and I completely agree with you working out and eating right i can eat i eat right but the working out is hard you know and i'm not playing a victim i'm just saying i completely agree with you i don't neglect it because i don't want to do it i love working out i want to work out if you go to my instagram or anything you can see i used to love working out but i can't bring myself to do it because every time i do it i get so dang scared i'm gonna have a heart attack even though it's not true i'm doing the opposite of what would give me a heart attack by working out i'm taking care of my heart you know what i mean and I still get scared. I'm telling you guys that whole, that quote that says, those who suffer from fear, or, or no, those who fear suffering are already suffering from fear. I'm so scared to take care of myself that I'm not, that I'm actually not taking care of myself. Does that make sense? Like I could be doing better for my health by working out and doing more things, just moving my body around. And I think in, in my head, by doing that, I think that, I'm hurting myself, but by not doing it, I'm actually hurting myself. I'm actually doing the opposite of what I think I'm thinking of it. And I logically, I get that. I can rationalize that. It's like, I understand that, but I still can't get to the point where I can get it in my brain to let the ang anxious part of me go. I have never been through this in my life, but I've always had drugs to make this stuff calm down. And now I'm having to do this all by myself and it's hard. And I'm just trying to make through, but I'm telling you, man, you don't want to continue to live in fear and live in this life of hardships. Um, what I do is do this right here. I talk through it. I'll be honest with you guys. Um, I talk to my friends some every now and then I'll text my friends when I'm in the worst mood ever. I'll be like, you know what? I, I feel like I don't want to go on, you know? And I don't, like, even when I say that, I just, it, it's more of me just saying, I'm so tired and I'm so tired. 
you know i'm so tired of going through this like i i, I hate and i i hate sitting here thinking every day i'm going to die and not having control of that like i just hate that feeling of like can i be happy what if i am though what if i get happy and i die like that's so exhausting to think about every day it's like it feels like you're living in this dark hole and i don't know how to get out sometimes you know even with therapy and everything talking it out with somebody does help but i think the only thing i can really do is just keep facing my fears sometimes i go on long drives i may drive for about an hour and a half and that helps my fear a little bit it helps me focus on something else man and that, that's just kind of what i've been going through but i'm just opening up a little bit and talking about how i live in fear if you guys have any you know comments or anything you want to say let me know but you know i want to say that and when i can help you guys trust me when i can get through this more i i want to be that beacon of light for you guys because i know how hard it is but right now i need you guys helping me that's where we are in life right now now i need you guys to help me all the videos i made on youtube where i was able to help and give out things because i got out of things this is my time where i reach out for help and say hey guys here's where i'm at here's how you can help me just just you know comments and um show love you know um do the best you can if you've been through what i've been through if you're not you know you can point me in some directions um trying to stay hydrated i i, I haven't drank anything outside of water in nine months nine months i have not had a soda i have not had a muster i have not and i haven't had fast food in over three years you know i've not had fast food in three years i haven't had soda i, I haven't had I don't, actually i've had soda in a year but we're just gonna go from when i got sober i for sure haven't had soda and energy drink or anything outside of water in over nine months only time i drink anything outside of water is electrolytes because i fast every now and then and i haven't had any meat no cheese no dairy no no eggs i don't eat junk food you know i don't eat i haven't eaten candy oh, i've only eaten candy one time in the last year and that was on new year's eve if y'all remember when i made my stream so anyway you too oh oh i didn't even see somebody comment uh it sh normally shows up on my thing i'm sorry about that it didn't show up for me i brought exercise equipment for my house two months ago was using it then i built some barrier in my mind and haven't done any exercise for two months yeah man so i hear you on that absolutely i have a workout thing man i have a lot of workout stuff here in my office you know what i mean i'm gonna get a boxing bag i think the easiest thing i've been able to do that i consistently could be i was doing for a little bit is i could box i have a hard time doing push-ups i have a hard time doing squats because the head movement anytime i move my head just a little bit too much i get dizzy and it's not it's, it's 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 well i don't get dizzy all the time because i can do stuff like play basketball here and there but sometimes when my anxiety is bad i can't i can barely move but boxing is the one thing that has helped me and I, I want to invest in a boxing bag. And I'm going to do that here in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to get uh, maybe not a big boxing bag. I'm going to get one of those things that stand up on their own. I'm going to get one of those. It's some boxing gloves. We're going to work on it, man. I don't know if I'm going to get through this, but, you know, I'm just I never understood when people say they have anxiety. I didn't understand it, but I get it now. I used to never get it. I used to think people were just weak minded that's honestly what i thought because that's what you hear you know you get out there and you get on youtube and you hear people just be like you just can't be weak-minded you just got to get through it and it's like okay how does that help though it's all in my head how do you mean just get through it if nothing external is going to end in people you know and i do agree working out can help but what happens when you become scared to work out you know what i mean you know and then people just like face your fears like i can't every day dude i can't i want to every day it's not like i'm trying not to i this is something i've never experienced in my life this would be one thing if i've been going through this my whole life and i could be like oh yeah okay i know what to do but it's brand new to me and and i've seen i like people who are honest like if i get on reddit some people will be honest they'd be like man it took me like two years to get through it it took me two three years to finally break through some people was taking 10 years because they grew up with it and these, these, are, these are the electrolytes i'll tell you about <sighs> and 
Anyway. Got one more. I hate when you got that relaxation feeling in your body and you're sitting down, but you know you should be doing um, doing a workout that day. Yeah. Well, what happens to me is I what I end up doing is I get in this place of this music is super loud for me. What I end up doing is I get in this place where I'm sitting down and I'm too scared to get up to do anything. Like, I don't even want to get up to go to the bathroom sometimes. It's like, oh, man, I'm chilling. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Like sometimes you get so scared to even move. Like, you know, I don't want to ruin this. Cause you know how it is. If you got really bad anxiety, like I do, I I got bad anxiety from substance abuse. Uh, I abused drugs for too long and I abused my sexual addiction too long. So I got used to that feeling coming from other places. And so my body, my brain has a hard time just adjusting. And it's hard, dude. It's just hard. And like I said, I was working out for a while with the anxiety and then I had a panic attack. And then after that panic attack, and if you guys have ever had a panic attack, it freezes you up for a little bit. Cause nobody, the feeling of a panic attack sucks. Like I had a panic attack and I just sat on my couch and I wasn't, I mean, I sat in my chair and I wasn't even doing anything. I just chilled. And I was, but the feeling the in your mind is crazy. Here's the thing with medication. This is just my opinion only. From what I've heard, from what I've heard, people have told me that medication, it helps for a little bit, but it, it doesn't help you get over the anxiety. It just kind of either, it does two things. Medication either stops you from thinking about it or it just pushes it. It just keeps it from rising. But it's a matter of time before it gets there because everybody I know that they talked about who has anxiety and bad panic attacks, they 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 say they've been doing it for a year, two years, three years. They all say the same thing that the anxiety is still there, like nothing, like they just can manage it more. But then they have a hard time getting off the medicine, and I don't want that. I don't want to get on medication just to have a hard time to get off of it. Because then I feel like I, it, to me it feel like I'm back on smoking weed again. It'll feel like I'm back to drinking again. It's just like I'm doing something to now would be doing something to make the anxiety go away. That's the whole reason I got anxiety in the first place. I didn't have anxiety like I do now. Not until I started abusing marijuana a lot. But that's also because I was also looking at pornography the whole time. So I was living in a fantasy with that and the marijuana until my anxiety finally hit a point. But for the most part, I was doing okay, but now I know I wasn't doing okay. So I don't know. For me personally, I, I don't want to take medication because they were going to put me on a, what is it, Xanax? They told me they would put me on that, and I was like, no. And I'll tell you this literally, and I'm not trying to scare anybody, but uh, the doctor said they wanted to put me on Xanax. And then 30 days later, uh, I was talking about it in a meeting I was in, and I said, I was thinking about it. It was at one point in my life, I thought about taking Xanax because the doctor wanted me to take it. And as soon as I had that thought, uh, I was in a meeting and the person came out and said that my sister overdied on Xanax. So the second I thought about taking Xanax, I literally heard a person overdose on Xanax and die. And I was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I just rather not because at the place I am with my anxiety, my panic attacks, I feel like if I started taking Xanax, I think I would abuse it. I'm a drug addict. I am a drug addict. If I take a drug, I'm going to abuse it. I can't, I don't think I can do it. I'd rather, I, this is going to sound sad, but I'd rather just feel crazy. I'd rather just feel crazy and cry and be depressed sometimes and be sad and just get through it. than go to Xanax and try to stop it. Cause I know I, I can't. That's the whole reason I don't go back to marijuana, even CBD. I don't even smoke CBD. Even though I heard it can help, I know if I start taking CBD, I'm gonna wanna smoke all the time. The second I start smoking CBDs, I'm gonna wanna smoke CBD every day. Every chance I get, it's gonna be like smoking a cigarette, even though I know it's not as harmful. I feel like if I start smoking CBDs, and most people don't sell flower CBD, they all sell it in vaporizers, and I don't wanna vape. I don't wanna vape every day. Cause I see people vaping around me, man, I'm blowing those big old white clouds. 
and they're still anxious it's the people who i see smoking cbd you know they're still anxious as heck they're like oh i gotta go smoke man i gotta go smoke man i'm going crazy i gotta go smoke i gotta go smoke same thing you see with people who do cigarettes but like, i'm stressed out dude i gotta go smoke a cigarette man i gotta smoke a ci if i don't smoke a cigarette i'm gonna go crazy i don't want to be that guy i don't want to be like if i don't smoke i'm gonna go i'm gonna go i don't know what i'm gonna do no i just rather just sit here and i'd rather just be like hey man i'm going crazy right now i'm just gonna sit here that's me you too let me know what y'all think peace